<laughs> it's obviously very important, even though policy is a very democratic uh, thing in the Green Party, for the leader to be a fantastic articulator of policy in a detailed and nuanced and sophisticated way. Uh, with that in mind, I wondered if each candidate could tell us what book or journalist or writer or series of essays has influenced them the most, and what do they disagree with the most about that book or writer or etc. Okay. A couple of seconds to think about that. <laughs> well, if we if we start with with Peter and then move in this direction, um, that's an interesting one. But I'd probably say uh, Bradley Barnes uh, and to the guy who's got the devil's cap, the man's a man for all that. And okay, it's sexist given the uh, context of it, but the principle of equality, the principle that we are all equal, the principle that each human being is created equal. And uh, you could kind of go to Rousseau and talk about that in terms of the, the, you know, the freedoms and you know that everywhere people are in chains, but. You know, like just let's shake them off, let's be free. And I think those things, I, I, I studied PPE, but not Oxford, I wasn't that smart. Um, but uh, I, and my experience of coming here, being back here again, my first experience was here with the uh, boxing club when I was at university, and I had quite a, an encounter with somebody from Oxford University <coughs> where I came off looking less than, less than good. I've got to say, but that was my first trip to Oxford, this is a lot more friendly. Um, so, uh, you know, even if you give me hostile questions, it's not going to be um, that difficult. But it's a good question. I think we've got to be open to new ideas, we've got to be open to new things. And the, the most recent thing that I read, which has got loads and loads of good stuff in it, was the spirit level. And that's something that when I'm teaching, teaching and I'm talking about comparative social care around the world, that's something that I can direct my students to. So, oddly enough, um, I was a big reader in my early teens, and the book that made the most impact on me when I stop and think about it was Rape of the Fair Country. <coughs> I wasn't even living in Wales at the time, and as you know, I'm Wales Party leader now, so I've been in Wales for 30 years. But that book made me an environmentalist. When I read what happened, to a beautiful place, through industry, through profit, through lack of care and concern for the environment. That did it for me. I don't know how old I was then, but it, it, it touched me. Obviously I've read a million books since then, but that was the one that touched me and made me agree <coughs> more than likely. So if you haven't read it, read it. It's a quick read, but it gets to the nub of how you destroy something so precious. And I can't say I've found anything wrong with it, because um, at the age at which I read it, and I'd never reread it, um, I was satisfied with the lesson I'd learned from it. Um, I have to say that the book that I've read that's in, certainly in the most recent years that's had the most impact is Tim Jackson's Prosperity Without Growth. Um, and I think, for those who haven't read it, the title, Prosperity Without Growth, pretty well describes it to you. He's a very serious senior ec uh, economist. I actually went to the launch of the book before I read it, but I just happened to get invited along, and it was really quite an amazing book launch, because what you had was you had all of the sort of green inclined suits uh, from Whitehall, who all had their Brocklands there. You could hardly fit into the room for all of the folded Brocklands stack up along the wall. <laughs> and there was also, you know, some, some traditional environmentalists there, and a few curious people who weren't really greens at all but wanted to know why there was such a fuss about this book. Um, and I think really that title tells us what we can sell, why we can, how we can sell Green Party policies in a way, you know, we've talked a lot you know, about how angry we are, how dangerous the current situation are. But if we tell people things are really miserable, vote for us, it's not a great message, actually. What we need to be saying to people is, we can offer you a better life. The Green Party offers you a better life, and that's what Tim Jackson's saying in that book. If you work fewer hours, you know, we've got the unhappiest children in Britain in the developed world. If people, if we, you know, break our long hours culture and allow parents to go home to their children, allow people to have life with their hobbies, you know, as Caroline Lucas often says, no one ever lies on the deathbed saying, I wish I'd spent more time in the office. And, you know, we need to say the Green Party can offer you a better life. And in terms of what Tim Jackson doesn't do in the book, 
He doesn't do politics. Unfortunately, he's an economist, and so what we have to do is add the politics to it. Thank you. Um, well, you're putting me down to one, and I'm going to cheat, really, because I think one of the one of the most important books that I read early on, and I've reread it several mm -hmm. times, is actually a novel by Aldous Huxley called *The Island*, and there was a system, a society described in that where people took part in, whether they were a professor or the doctor, everyone took some role in the growing of food or some of the helping out of the allotment, that the school system was genuinely child orientated, not like some of the uh, ideas that are swanned about in a sort of jargon-esque way these days where it was accepted, and I must admit having a third child did help me to learn an awful lot about the psychology of human beings, that they would work with children in school and to find out the strengths of different people. We are all different, and I reckon there is a natural reason for that, because there needs to be a range of people to take on different tasks, part of the natural whole. So I loved that, but of course in there there was the, uh, the problem that life, the, the perfect or almost utopian life there was going to be destroyed because oil had been discovered offshore. But Small is Beautiful, um, picked that up in a second hand book store in my early 20s and looked through that. I would say perhaps what we disagree with that now is the urgency of the issues that we have to deal with now means that we do have to uh, nationalise uh, and to ensure that we can get rapid renewable energy infrastructure as well as supporting local things. But writing on the wall is my one that I have by my bedside at the moment. And if I very quickly just say one of the quotes from that, it's, it's our history of revolution and rebellion and how we've built democracy for hundreds of years that most of us have lost. Uh, and John McLean, the striking miner, Capitalism is rotten to the foundations and must give way to a new society. I consider capitalism the most infamous, bloody and evil system that mankind has ever witnessed. And I would back that. <laughs>